could be more. The sound of justice coming, justice coming, justice coming. Hear the sound of justice coming, rolling through the Justice sounds like children playing, children playing, children playing. Justice sounds like children playing, rolling through the land. Justice sounds like chains are breaking, chains are breaking, chains are breaking. Justice sounds like chains are breaking, rolling through the land. Justice sounds like truth a telling. Truth a telling, truth a telling. Justice sounds like truth a telling, rolling through the land. Hear the sound of justice coming, justice coming. Justice coming, hear the sound of justice coming, rolling through the land. Hear the sound of justice coming. Amen. I'm going to ask for you to stand for the call to worship. And in the response area where it says new students, I'm going to ask you to join in with us. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are sinful, turn in here. Those without sense, she says. Come, 
you all, I promise you can join us at that part, including the new students. <laughs> if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as a hidden treasures, then you will understand the true awe of the Holy One and find the knowledge of God. And you will understand righteousness and justice and equity and every good path the wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. The 173rd academic year of Eden Theological Seminary has begun. Let us worship together and seek the wisdom of God. Please be seated. Good evening. Good evening to our entire We Are Eden community. Welcome to this convocation of our new academic year. Now, in core, of course, in many ways, we've already begun. Orientations have taken place, classes in our asynchronous and blended schedules are well underway, and more are being scheduled even as we speak. So it is good to gather in the Worley Chapel on the Eden campus and online to celebrate the new year together as one community of learning and faith. Over the past few years, the faculty, staff, students, trustees and network of Eden Theological Seminary have been hard at work to rebuild our school as more accessible, more affordable, and a more impactful community of learning and faith to better serve the congregations, organizations, communities, and people of the progressive Christian movement. We are excited that this year, via our degree programs, non-degree programs, our Walker Leadership Institute, that we are offering courses, degrees, certificates, seminaries, immersive experiences, and events in more modalities than ever before. Online, in-person, blended, asynchronous, and hybrid. All to empower leaders for ministries of social justice and community transformation. It is going to be a great year. And we are so excited that you are with us to be a part of it. Everywhere we are, we are Eden. And we are Eden everywhere we are. Tonight, we are delighted to be joined in this worship service by two leaders who are close to Eden's heart, Reverend Rebecca Turner and Reverend Monty Jackson, who serve now as co-pastors of Christ, United Church of Christ in Maplewood, Missouri. Reverends Turner and Jackson and the community they lead have been inspiring the Eden faculty and students and whole community for several years with their bold social justice witness in their immediate community and throughout the region. Christ, United Church of Christ, has been leading the way to illustrate how congregations of progressive Christian faith can reimagine their facilities, worship, education, and mission to share sanctuary with those who are most vulnerable 
and most targeted in our communities. Christ, United Church of Christ, has been breaking open as well its worship to create new forms of music and liturgy to form and inspire participants in the progressive Christian movement. Christ has been living into its baptismal vocation to embody that in Christ, the domination systems of this world, racism, sexism, heterosexism, nationalism, fascism, ableism, colonialism, and imperialism do not have authority over us. We are the people of the good news of God's redemptive work in this world. We give thanks for the witness and mission of this congregation and of their leaders who are with us tonight. We are honored to welcome Reverend Monty and Reverend Rebecca as they lead us in preaching and worship. And tonight, especially, we are honored because a little bird has told me that Reverend Rebecca is celebrating her birthday with us. So it's a, big one. So, <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one, apparently. And Reverend Monty and the band are going to help us sing. Birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Rebecca. Happy birthday to you. birthday, Reverend Rebecca. Now, as we gather to celebrate this exciting academic year, we will begin with an acknowledgement of territory, shared by Reverend Beatrice Stephen, Chair of Eden's Social Justice Council. For thousands of years, First Nation people have worked on this land. Their relationship with the land remains at the center of their lives and spirituality. We who gather on this campus physically, as well as those who are connected virtually to classrooms, offices, and this chapel, do so on traditional territory to share by the Alaini, the Oseche, the Kwapos, the Sioux, the Damarao, and other tribes who passed through the region. Those of us who are participating by video conferencing are welcome to share in the chat the names of tribes on whose traditional lands they reside as well. We acknowledge the stewardship of this land throughout the ages. We acknowledge that their land was taken unjustly. 
and recognize the ongoing harm done, both to nations, people, and to creation. We acknowledge the longing of the native people for a day when their lands will be returned. And all people who live as protectors of the water, the land, the air, the creatures, may we live with respect for this land and do more to live in peace and friendship with its people. Thank you. Friends, I invite you to join me as we read together our opening prayer. Please read aloud with me. Gracious, amazing one, maker and sustainer of galaxies and geraniums, you who lead us through the wilderness of injustice, the desert of loneliness, to the waters of healing and grace. As we gather to begin this academic year, we look to you, to your word, to your vision, to sustain and lead us. Split the rock of hard-heartedness and greed. Break open the stubborn ways of bigotry and comfort, that justice may flow down like mighty waters. Call us back from all that does not satisfy, that we may drink deeply from the well of your wisdom and become channels of your shalom. We pray in the name of the one who was and is himself living water. Amen. A reading from the second chapter of the prophet Jeremiah, in which the house of Israel is asked to look at its own history. Hear the word of the Holy One, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel, thus says the Holy One. What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, where is the Holy One, who brought us up from the land of Egypt? Who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits. In the land of drought and deep darkness. In a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruit and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Holy One? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Holy One, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though there are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Holy One. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves. Cracked cisterns that can hold no water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Greetings. My, what a surprise. Thank you for celebrating with me. Greetings to President Krauss, to the faculty administrators, alumni and clergy colleagues, friends of this distinguished seminary, and most of all, greetings to you who are students. I am honored to be here with you today. May the words that I speak be pleasing to God. I'm preaching from Sunday's lectionary text. Now, in the first chapter of Jeremiah, we just heard the second, but in the first chapter, just to remind you, the prophet was marveling that he, just a young lad, would be called by God to speak. Probably the way that some of you newer students are feeling, ooh, what is this call from God? But now in this just the very next chapter, God's very first words through Jeremiah's mouth are strong, accusatory, and downright abrasive. I'm going to review just a few of them in a translation that I've chosen. Has a people ever changed its gods, even though they aren't gods at all? But my people changed, they exchanged their glory for worthlessness. They pursue worthless gods and become worthless themselves. The prophets prophesied in the name of Baal and pursued the worthless one. Three times in this passage, God accuses the people of chasing after worthless gods. They must be doing something pretty terrible, huh? But surely God isn't accusing us. We're here to follow the one true God, right? We're here because we were listening and God chose us. God called us. Yes. And at some point, you are going to say to yourself, is this really what it's all about? You're going to feel like your ministry setting has just dissolved into meetings and trivialities. It's going to feel like you are running as fast as you can and you can't keep up with what's going on. And no matter what you do, the church and the world never change. And I promise you, there's going to come a time when you wonder, believe me, it's going to happen, when you wonder whether you even believe what you are teaching and preaching. You might find yourself fantasizing about what you wish you had the nerve to say. Instead of what you know people expect from you and are willing to tolerate from you. And I want to suggest that when those feelings are happening, it may be because you've let yourself chase after the worthless gods, the wrong ones, the gods of empire. And in our society today, let's get real, they are the white gods. Empire in our world is white things white values, white priorities, white gods. Now you may ask, who are these white gods? Well, they are legion. The god of number of seats filled, the god of busyness, the god of buildings and property, the god of entertainment, the god of credentials and publishing, the God of carefully constructed systems that keep everyone in their assigned place. The God of straightness. The God of niceness. The God of comfort. The God of self-preservation. The God of tradition. The God of certainty. The God of prosperity. The God of individualism. The God of the right way of doing things. The God of success. These are the white gods worshipped in the Christian church today. But this is not a recent phenomenon. It didn't happen yesterday. 
chasing these white gods began 1,600 years ago when Christianity first shacked up with the Roman Empire. Whiteness has been the god of most of Christianity for all of those years. These are the worthless white gods that we have chased. The ones we put on pedestals and erected monuments to honor. The ones from whom we have sought our redemption. The ones we have asked to bless us with an easy life filled with pleasant distractions. The gods of upholding buildings and traditions as fortresses against the evil of this world. But these gods have no power to save us. They seek only to consume and will ultimately be our destruction. How many of you know the name Jordan Peele? Oh, good. Excellent. Jordan Peele is a filmmaker and is one of the great prophets of our day. In his latest movie titled, Nope, Otis Haywood tries to ride a white stallion named ghost to success in Hollywood in an industry that does not want to hire black people. Aliens come to his ranch, not in spaceships exactly, but in an ever-expanding white cloud of a beast that claims and consumes everything in its path. Riding whiteness towards success is a losing proposition. Like that alien beast, white gods have insatiable appetites. They steal and pillage and colonize while also at the same time attracting you with money, with popularity with spectacle. They keep you addicted to wanting more and more until they finally turn on you and devour you. White gods will always destroy you when they are done using you. And yet we still follow these worthless white gods these values of empire, these principles of property over people and competition over community, this European ethos of conquest that we inherited and for some reason just keep on perpetrating. The gods of whiteness are so deeply embedded in our psyches and our institutions that we have trouble imagining another way of being. As Reverend Michelle Higgins taught me, we must renounce whiteness in everything we do. What then is God calling us to do? If not to build churches and administer programs and encourage everybody to get comfortable in God's house. For that answer, we have to skip ahead to Jeremiah chapter 22. Yahweh says, act with justice. Rescue the victim from the oppressor. Do not oppress or mistreat resident aliens or the orphaned or widowed, and don't shed innocent blood in this place. But I solemnly swear, says Yahweh, that if you do not carry out these commands, this house will become a ruin. And the thing is, every single prophet says the same thing. It's not like they're giving us mixed messages. <laughs> what the true God desires from us is to do justice. We hear it over and over and over. So let's review, what is justice? Okay, well, first of all, what it's not, it's not posting our outrage about injustice on social media, even though that can bring attention to a problem. It's not reading about injustice, although that can help us to understand its complexities. It's not even praying about injustice, although prayer is important in helping us to articulate 
what is wrong and to humbly admit that we desperately need divine guidance in these times. Dr. John Brockie says that for Jeremiah, justice is the protection of weaker members of society from oppression by those more powerful. As clear and succinct a definition as I think I've ever heard. Dr. James Cone says that God is on the side of the oppressed and that there is no love without justice. Justice for me is using whatever privilege I have to disrupt the incessant harm that's being thrown from the ivory towers of the white gods. Churches now are going to tell you exactly what they want from you. You can see it in their profiles when they're searching for a pastor. They want someone who is great with youth. They want new programs. They want a pastor who's going to grow the church, who will attract young families, and who will, oh, please, dear baby Jesus, do something miraculous to save them from their impending institutional death. But what you probably are not going to hear them say is please give us the strong words from God about how we're chasing after the wrong gods. They're probably not going to tell you that they want to be in the streets alongside the oppressed. The hard truth that Jeremiah learned is that prophets call, or that God calls prophets like you, like me to tell the people something they actually do not want to hear. My pastor, Monty Jackson, said to me after one of the very first sermons he heard me preach, whoa, you really aren't trying to win any popularity contest, are you? <laughs> That's the kind of compliment you don't forget. <laughs> We can chase after the worthless white gods of popularity. Or we can preach the word of God. Yeah. But we cannot do both. Yeah. In 1944, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was in prison in Germany and wrote these words. Our church has been fighting during these years only for self-preservation as if that were an end in itself, it has become incapable of bringing the word of reconciliation and redemption to humankind and to the world. We can be Christians today only in doing justice among human beings. Today, as in Jeremiah's day, as in Bonhoeffer's day, we are living under a great threat in this nation. School children have to take active shooter drills. Women have lost their bodily autonomy. Climate change is causing devastating storms in some areas and horrible drought in others. The impoverished fall prey to predatory loans. Voting rights are diminishing. Prisons are nothing more than gigantic plantations where black men who are incarcerated on trumped up charges work for free for Procter and Gamble. And the church is silent. The church cowers and hides itself. It becomes indistinguishable from the enemy, cozying up to worthless gods in order to gain their approval and protection. How long? will the oppressed need to cry out before the people of God do something? How long should they have to wait for justice? Pastor, if you're not speaking to these issues in your church, you have bowed to the white gods. If we do not preach justice, we fail to speak the word from God. If we do not do the hard work of justice, we fail to do the work of God. And if we do not identify ourselves as justice makers, we fail to be 
the image of God. May we each hear clearly the call of God, and may we be brave enough to act. Amen. Faultless prayers from ivory towers, dry dust poured on sun parched lands, impotent to ease the suffering, nerveless words and sleight of hand. Oh God, what have we done? Refused our blame Head behind our piety Oh God What have we done? Empty prayers from hardship junkies Lay upon forgotten shells Words will never restore justice Powerless all by themselves Oh God, what have we done? Refused our blame Hid behind our party, oh God, what have we done? Prayer is not the panacea, recognize it's just the first. Inquiry for inspiration Act to mend this troubled earth Oh God, what have we done? Refused our blame Hid behind our piety Oh God Every prayer find a way, make a change, repair, make good. Oh God, what have we done? Tell me, refused our blame. Oh God, tell me, tell me, what have we done? Oh, tell me what have we done? Church, what have we done? This evening, it is my honor to introduce to you the 2022 Entering Student Class. 
This year, students will be joining us from near and far as an expression of our high flex learning model. And we are going to share our infographic here, if possible. And if not possible, okay, there it is. There's our entering student infograph. It is um, not 100% complete, but this is what it looks like today. As you become acquainted with this year's class, I want to let you in on what makes them so special. This year, the 2022 incoming class at Eden Theological Seminary is proudly represented by members from 15 states. Eden's, yes, yes, from all around, all around the country. Eden's commitment to radical inclusivity is evident by the 12 denominations and non-denominational groups represented. Over 55% of the incoming class have self-identified as women, and 52% are in their second and third careers, students in their 40s and 50s. Lastly, we began offering clinical pastoral education in the fall of 2021, and for 2022, we have admitted 10 students into the CPE program. Yes, clap for that. Integrating CPE into the programming at Eden has proved to be an essential, has proved to be essential during this era of ministry. So now I would like to introduce to you each member of the 2022 entering student class of Eden Theological Seminary. If you are here with us, I would ask you to come forward to stand on the stairs. And if you are online, I want you to um, demonstrate yourself by waving your hands and making a big to-do on your screen. Yep, see, just like that. Yep, good, who is that? Way to go, Margaret, good job, good example. All right, so we are going to begin with our credit non-degree students. And I will read their name, their denomination, and where they uh, are located. Mary Brandt, United Methodist, Texas. <laughs> Douglas Damron, United Methodist Church, Ohio. Marie Griffin, United Methodist Church, Illinois. And Mark Schmidt, United Church of Christ in Wisconsin. Our next set of students are the Clinical Pastoral Education class. Sandy Bayline, United Church of Christ, Missouri. Brian Busick, ELCA in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Zaria Davis, unspecified, Missouri. <laughs> Shonda Duranlo, United Church of Christ, Iowa. <laughs> Kimberly Fielding, Christian Church Disciples of Christ, Missouri. Thomas Head, Roman Catholic, Mississippi. Nathan Kaplan, United Church of Christ, Missouri. Don Martin, United Church of Christ, Missouri. Kendall Moore, United Church of Christ, Texas. Next is our brand new Master of Community Leadership degree program. <laughs> Melinda Love, United Church of Christ, Missouri. Michael Scott, AME, 
Missouri. Next is our Master of Arts in Professional Studies, Geneva Davis, Kojic, Indiana. Ken Lawrence, PCUSA, Tennessee. Our Master of Theological Studies degree program, Hilding Holroyd, United Church of Christ, Missouri. Next is our Master of Divinity degree program, Carrie Borgman, United Church of Christ, Missouri. <laughs> Sylvie Bowen Bailey, United Church of Christ, Missouri. <laughs> Heather Buckley Wilson, non-denominational, Missouri. Anya Covington, Baptist, Illinois. Nicole Ellis, United Church of Christ, Missouri. Kimberly Fielding, Christian Church Disciples of Christ, Missouri. Elva Heiligenstein, United Church of Christ, Illinois. <laughs> Brian Mack, AME, South Carolina. <laughs> Kelsey Mitchell, United Methodist Church, Missouri. <laughs> Glenda Rooks, non-denominational, Missouri. Tori Santiago Troutman, United Methodist Church, Missouri. Everett Thompson, United Church of Christ, Georgia. Robert Wiseman, Kojic, California. Next is our Doctor of Ministry degree program. Margaret Conley, non-denominational, Georgia. <laughs> Catherine Golson, United Methodist Church, Illinois. <laughs> Zeb Green, Unitarian Universalist, Texas. <laughs> Mickey Hassler, Baptist, Missouri. Christy Hanky Ratliff, Episcopal, Missouri. <laughs> Nikki Moreno Howard, United Methodist, Virginia. <laughs> Loretta Morris, Baptist, Tennessee. <laughs> Erlen Perlado Mertens, Federation of Christian Ministries, Missouri. Tim Reed, United Church of Christ, Missouri. <laughs> Dorothea Richard, non-denominational, Texas. <laughs> Frida Wilkins, non-denominational, Virginia. <laughs> Reggie Yates, Baptist, Tennessee. J.T. Young, United Methodist Church, Missouri. Lindsay Brand is here. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Brand is here, and she's starting. And I just got word from a little birdie that Lindsay Brand is here. Lindsay Brand, please come up front. UCC, Missouri.
We are so glad that all of you are here and that you have been able to uh, make it and that you're ready to start and I, I know how anxious you are. But let's all welcome them. Join me in applauding, unmuting, waving, cheering, celebrating as we welcome our entering class. It is our tradition at Eden to begin each new year with a covenant renewal, pledging ourselves once again to the work of the Holy Spirit in the world, following in the way of Jesus. I hope you will join us when you see your part on the screen. And now, beloved, let us with all our hearts renew our part in the covenant that God has made. And let us move with new resolve in synchrony with the movement of the Holy Spirit. This renewed resolve means that we are most content when our place and our work align most closely with the mind and ministry of Jesus and the realm of God coming near. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations, others stretch us in new ways. Yet the power to do all these things is assuredly given to us in Christ, who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make the covenant of God our own. Let us dedicate our hearts to the Lord and resolve never to go back. Being thus prepared, let us now with sincere gratitude for the grace and steadfast love of God and trusting in the promises of God, invest ourselves anew, sincerely and without reservation. Please join us, unmuted if you would like, as we read together. Divine One. I am not only for myself, but also for you and your creation. Call me to where my gifts are needed most. Form me for compassion. Form me for bold acts of justice. Let me be drawn into the wake of your spirit and the suffering of your people. Let me be full of joy. Let me be full of indignation at the wrongs of this world. I freely and heartily join my heart to the way of Jesus and the ways in the world. Ready to begin. May all that we have done and been until now make rich soil from which you can grow new servant leaders for Jesus' continuing ministry. faculty and staff stand ready again to serve you. May all our interactions with students inside the classroom and beyond help strengthen their commitment to you 
and may our labors only help your beloved community come near. Now, O oh glorious and blessed God, you are ours and we are yours, and the covenant which we have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. church all invited in Christ united we are the church restless presence march towards justice bonded by grace at the table of peace truth and holy rage. We are the church, God's proclamation, inspiration. We are the church, rainbow universe, God with us, ever learning, ever changing, ancestral spirit, holy ever be. We are the church. New creation, we are the church, broken vessels, work toward healing, true to our call, reconciling of us being God's people, I'm so honored and, uh, to stand before you as Reverend Dr. Sonia Williams, the Dean of the Seminary here at Eden Theological Seminary. And I'm even more honored to be on a faculty that is about justice. If, if you would, I just want to acknowledge a few things that we are doing as the spirit leads us. Dr. Laurel Kelf has written a wonderful piece uh, for Wabash, Problem and Project-Based Learning in a Digital Age. Uh, and I also hear that she's doing some podcast work for Wabash, so please do look at the Wabash site. Dr. Clint McCann is working on several writing pieces on the Psalms and Justice. Dr. Kristen Leslie has written and obtained several successful grants for the Eden Garden and Gleaning Project. Most recent collaboration is the Garden and Community, a Coalition for Well-Being. 
She and partners discuss liberation through connection to the land and to community. Dr. Leslie will also be a workshop presenter for the Tri Conference in Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota annual conference in October. Yes, awesome. Dr. Dietra Weiss Baker is working on a variety of things, including some top secret stuff I can't name just yet. <laughs> And she is expanding her writing and homiletical wisdoms for public consumption. Dr. Mary Shiler Bloffis, our Vice President of Advancement, has a chapter published in a forthcoming book coming out in October, Explore Vocational Discovery and Ministry, Explorations in Theological Field of Education. And she too will be a workshop presenter in Kansas, Oklahoma conference in October. Dr. Damianti Niles will be one of the theological reflectors at the UCC All Summit that will be online. She was a keynote speaker for ATLA, who was overjoyed that uh, she was able to come and work on her recent publication, Doing Theology with Humility, Generosity, and Wonder. Dr. Niles and Dr. Krause were, wrote lit uh, liturgical pieces for the UCC's Just Peace Sunday. Dr. Krause was a keynote at the Indiana Kentucky Conference, UCC annual meeting in June. Uh, she is leading a multi-country and school initiative for the advancement of theological education and its social justice work through congregations. That's another one of those top secret missions. <laughs> clergy, uh, she's uh, continued to speak to clergy in the Missouri Mid-South Conference and preach to several congregations, including First Presbyterian Church of St. Louis. All while she continues to write New Testament commentaries, provide service to the church and community, teach the gospel, and advocate for diversity, inclusion, and expand access to theological education. That's <laughs> President Krauss. <laughs> Our newest faculty, Dr. Raquel Letzum, is writing in two areas of interest, the Gospel of Mark, for Westminster John Knox New Interpretation Series, A Womanist Biblical Interpretation, and secondly, a revised essay for the updated True to Our Native Land. Dr. Lansom is also large, uh, launching Midstream Manor here at Eden, which provides an opportunity to connect as a community in a digital space for inspiration and conversation. We hope the public facing uh, Stream would expose uh, Eden and provide greater access and introduce students to our various programs. And on Thursday, October 13th, Dr. Letson will be inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Collegium of Scholars at Morehouse College. <laughs> Dr. Grundy is working on a paper for the Scholar Teacher Grant from Calvin Workshop Institute. He is working on a huge architecture project with Sam Fox School at Washington University, combining theology and architecture. So excited to see the creation of new and intentional worship spaces. His most recent publication is Recovering Communion in a Violent World. And as of July 1, 2022, Dr. Christopher Grundy serves as the new academic dean here at Eden. Reverend Dr. Sonia B. Williams, Dean of the Seminary, had the opportunity to engage in interfaith discussions as a panelist for the Mission Joy Reflection on, da on the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Tutu, a collaboration of Eden Seminary and the Interfaith Partnership of Greater St. Louis. I am certain that black maternal mortality is a bioethical issue and needs attention. I'm honored to have served as a discussant and panelist expert for Advocate Healthcare, the Plaus Family Lecture on the Black Maternal Health, and served as a lecturer for Black Health and Spirituality. Later, I participated in the Christian Left Conference through the Center of Religion and its context of Emmanuel College in Toronto. I served as panelist for Rethinking the Christian Left from the Belly of the Empire, charting new paths beyond colonization. And recently, I was interviewed by a pretty large TV network that's top secret, but I'm telling you, you are blessed, and you are blessed, and you are blessed. <laughs> I 
had a great discussion with them because of my advocacy and interest in women's rights and my theological and ethical response to the black maternal health crisis because of my interest in white rural women and clergy response as a public witness. And if you can catch me in October, I'll be the keynote speaker uh, and closing worship leader for the Florida Conference UCC annual gathering. When I say Eden faculty is on fire, yeah. have I made it clear? Yeah. Amen. Again, it is such a joy to be a part of a community committed to 173 years of mission work, being the school of the church. I am honored to serve as a dean of the seminary and as this church, as the church and schools undergo massive change. As a practical theologian, I understand change comes after crisis. So our formation is essential and construction of hope is paramount. And you, when you come to Eden, you will find all of that. Under President Krause's leadership, Eden continues to lead scholars and lay into the future. And I'm committed to helping us find ways to adapt to an ever-changing path and leading us to a beautiful horizon together. One school, one vision, and one mission as a school of the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this is what they keep waiting for me to announce. You, you ready for this one? There's ice cream outside. <laughs> Will everyone stand, please? May Almighty God fill us with courage and grace to follow in her call. Amen. Okay, you want to go back to the ending of ch church? Let's take the let's take the second verse. We are the church, proclamation, inspiration.